Hey everybody, it's Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have four DIYs for you today using mostly items from the Dollar Tree. This may be my last fall decor video of the year, but we will see. Let's go. For this first project, I'm using a brownie pan and a jumbo turner from Dollar Tree along with four of these magnetic containers. The first thing I'm going to do is spray my brownie pan with Rust-Oleum Colonial Red. I think this is a gorgeous wagon red and that's what we're going to be making today. So it pretty much just took one coat and I let that dry. Next, using my black Waverly chalk paint, I am painting pretty much anything that's gray on these four containers. I didn't bother hot gluing them shut. They were actually pretty tight anyway. So we're going to paint all the gray black and let that dry. Next, using one of my mesh stencils from a maker studio. I just want the word pumpkins on the side of my wagon here. You could do this with stickers. You could do this with a paint marker, um, whatever you'd like. But I'm using some of my chalk art and this stencil just to get the word pumpkins in white. I tried to kind of use the radio flyer wagon as my inspiration for this. And so I wanted my wording to be on um, with white. Now I am only doing this on one side in case I decide to use this wagon other than fall and then it would just say nothing on the other side. Going back to my little containers, I'm going to paint the clear window with white. Now I so wish I could find white Waverly chalk paint somewhere because it only would have taken one coat. Here I'm using an acrylic craft paint from Michaels and it took two or three coats to get a solid white. So for all of you who wonder why I use chalk paint instead of acrylic, here you go. Here's your answer. It's just thicker and covers in less coats. So did the white, then coming back to my pan, I'm using this jumbo turner. I thought it was perfect because it's essentially the same width as the pan and I'm just going to attach this with some E6000 and also a little bit of hot glue and this will be the handle of our wagon. Next, coming back to what will be my wheels of my wagon, I decided to use four red buttons from my stash for the little red knob that's on a normal wagon wheel. So here I did attach them with the magnets, but then I did go ahead and hot glue the wheels onto my wagon. Here I'm just giving you an example of how you can style this using items in your stash. I was literally just pulling things out of my fall floral tub, things that I could use. Um, I think I got these at Dollar Tree last year. I haven't seen them this year. And some of the little pumpkins. Um, like I said, you could use this year round, just flip it around so it doesn't say pumpkins and you could put apples in it, anything you'd like. So I'd love to know what you guys think about this cute little wagon. Moving on to our second project. I will say this one took me the longest and evolved the most during the project. Using two of these foam pumpkins and four of these foam wreaths, some poster sticker letters, or you can use wood letters, and some of these wood stems from Dollar Tree. I'll list everything I used in the description box below. So I really wanted the round wreath forms that are a little bit smaller and they're flat. 
I have not been able to find those at Dollar Tree lately. They are a little smaller and I think would have made this project um, a little bit easier. But total optional step, I wanted everything kind of to have a white base. So I used that same acrylic paint to paint all four of my wreaths white. Then you can see here I'm going to remove the stems from these two foam pumpkins. They're carvable and they have a nice line that I just followed with my miter saw and cut each of them in half. So I end up with four hollow foam pumpkin halves. They are white on the inside, but I also go ahead and paint them white on the outside. The wreaths I only did one coat, the pumpkins I went ahead and did two just to make sure I covered up that orange color. Once I had all four of my pumpkin halves painted and they were drying, I decided I wanted to wrap my wreaths with the jute twine that I had on hand, which is from Walmart. I've used this before. It is a little thicker than the Dollar Tree jute, but of course you could use whatever you have on hand. You could leave these wreaths just white, or you could even leave them green if you liked that green color. So that did take a while to wrap all four of those with the jute twine. Next, coming back to these fall fat quarters that I bought at Walmart and I showed in a haul and I used at least in one other DIY, I'm going to cut four or five strips of each fabric that are one inch wide and whatever this shorter length is, it looks like it's maybe about 18 inches. So one inch by 18 inch. I'm going to do five from each fabric, but I believe I only ended up using four. So here are my jute wrapped wreaths and what I decided to do with this fabric just to bring in some more fall color is I'm going to hot glue and wrap these strips, but leaving space in between. You can see like I'm doing here about two inches in between and like I said it took about four of my strips to get all the way around each of the wreaths and I used a different fabric on each of my four wreaths. I thought this was really fun, brought in some different plaids and also an orange and white buffalo check. Again this is one of those steps that's completely uh, customizable for your decor, your taste, if you want to just leave it neutral with the jute twine, you could do that as well. Thanks again for joining me today on my channel. I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. I love crafting and sharing all these things with you. If you have not subscribed, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. So that was all four of my wreaths with the different fabrics. Now I am gluing one of these stems onto the top of each of my pumpkins and doing that for all four. Now, Remember I mentioned those other wreaths that I really wanted. If I would have had those, the pumpkins could have been glued to the front. But because these wreaths were a little bit larger, I needed a back. So I took a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and just roughly cut some messy circles that will be glued onto the back of my wreaths so that I can glue the pumpkin to the center of it. You'll see what I mean.
here in a minute. So I'm gonna have four of these pieces. I could have left them white, but my pumpkins were already white. So I decided to give them a coat of mineral Waverly chalk paint, which is a light gray. Next, I wanted to have the letters for the word fall on my four pumpkins. So you could use some of these sticker letters and just stick the black letter onto the front. However, you see here, um, I don't have any more the letters to spell fall, but don't despair. See what I'm doing is I'm cutting around. Maybe you've seen me do this before. You can use what's left from where the sticker letter was as a stencil. So that's what I'm doing. I'm cutting around where the F-A-L-L -L were, and I'm going to use these as a stencil on the front of my pumpkin. So here I'm taking the sticker from around the letter F, and I'm going to center that on the front of my pumpkin. I'm gonna do that to all four letters, and then I'm going to use um, a foam, brush, not brush, oh it's that sprouncer thing the, that you dab on like I did in my last video. Don't forget the middle of the A. Here and I'm going to use truffle paint, here you go, see one of these little foam things and just bounce the paint being very careful to keep it just where I want it, not around the outside. So I'm going to do that to all of my letters. Here's another thing that I had to just kind of roll with. You'll see the sticky from my stencil started pulling up some of the white paint from around the letter. So you have two choices. You can reapply white paint to cover that up, or you just take more sticker and randomly start distressing it by pulling up more white paint. So this was one of those happy little accidents, like Bob Ross always used to say. I really loved the not perfectly white look that this gave my pumpkins. So this was one of those things I was really happy that went wrong because I loved how it turned out even more. So I did that to all four of my pumpkins. Now that my foam board is almost dry, I'm just putting some hot glue around the outside and centering each of my wreaths so that now they have that gray center. And here's all four of the wreaths with the gray background and the pumpkins hot glued to the center. This thing is really long. It's like four feet long. Um, so then I just took some nautical rope and actually if you're going to make this, glue the nautical rope to the back of the wreaths before you glue the pumpkins. It will lay flat and will be so much easier to glue the nautical rope, but mine's not flat because the pumpkin is already there, but it's okay. I just hot glued the nautical rope with leaving the little loop at the top, and I'm just going to lay them vertically in order of the word. So here you can see it hanging on my wall. I believe each of those wreaths is 18 inches. So yeah, this is like four, four feet long. There it is hanging on a nice little skinny piece of wall. And I absolutely love how it turned out. Again, it was one of those projects that kind of evolved as we went along, but I really love how it turned out and how different you can make it depending on your color tastes. All right, after that, we needed an easier idea, an easier DIY. So using four of these pumpkins, the letters F-A-L-L -L from Walmart, this Buffalo check scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby, we're going to just kind of upgrade these little pumpkins. So tracing the fronts of the letters on the Buffalo check paper, I'm then going to cut them out and just Mod Podge this paper letter to the front of the letters from Walmart. Now you could just leave the letters how they are. They're kind of a whitewash look. 
you could paint them a different color, whatever you want to do. But um, I have not done a whole lot of buffalo check yet this fall, so I decided to go ahead and Mod Podge this paper to the front of my letters. I decided to just leave the front of the pumpkin how it is and just flip them over to the back. I did use my hand sander to um, roughen up the edges. You can see how it's sanded around the edges just to give it a little bit more of a farmhouse look. After removing the raffia bows, I decided to make some bows with my jute twine and I'm going to do four of those, one for each pumpkin. And then I'm also going to take this skinny black gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby that I've used before and make a smaller bow to go on top of the jute bow. So it'll have kind of a double layered bow effect. This step is also optional to just sand the edges of your letter just in case any of the paper is hanging over. Um, it doesn't really matter if it is. I did not Mod Podge the tops of my letters. You know, I just did the one layer to stick the paper to the wood letter. Um, and then you can just glue those letters to the front of your pumpkins. I decided to use wood glue for this and I laid them next to each other just to make sure I was getting them all at the same level. Here they are, so cute and simple. You could style these on your mantle anywhere in your house. All right, for my last one, I used three of these beware signs, but if you don't want to deal with glitter, you could use three of these scarecrow signs that you can find. This um, glitter what, took a while to get off, but I liked these signs because of those notches on the top and the bottom, because I want this project to look like planks of wood. So some people say they just scrape the glitter off, some people spray with water, here I am using Goo Gone. Whatever your method, I wanted to get the glitter off because I wanted this to be smooth on the front and the back. Um, so what I'm making is a table centerpiece box. So if you wanted to just keep the glitter on the inside of your box, that's totally fine too. Here I'm just filling in the holes, just one of those details that um, I think make the projects look a little bit more high-end and less like you're putting them together using items from the Dollar Tree. So let that spackle dry and then just sand to make it smooth. All right, so here you can see both sides of each sign are smooth of glitter and I'm going to give them two coats of this white acrylic craft uh, paint from Michaels again because I'm out of Waverly and can't find it anywhere so definitely two coats on this side to cover up the black and where the letters are you probably could get away with one coat on the other side but I wanted these to be completely white Next, taking my yardstick and a Sharpie marker, I'm going to, where the notches are, just draw a line to give this more of that shiplap or palette wood look. And I'm doing this on the front and back of all three of my signs. For the ends of my sign, or, or my box, I'm using two of these Autumn Blessing signs. I uh, probably would have liked the white one but I couldn't find that so I used this one that had the green background um, and see I'm gluing it with wood glue and hot glue and the width of it fits perfectly 
the width of this sign. I was so excited that for $5, I was able to make this big box to go on my dining room table. So I'm gluing those to the bottom of my box and then you'll see me gluing the two sides of my box as well. And here is my box all put together. Again, I want it to look more rustic. So now that I have the white and the box all put together, I'm first going to dry brush with my Truffle Waverly Chalk Paint, which is that dark brown. I'm going to do this on all three sides, outside and inside of my box. To add even more dimension to my project, I'm now dry brushing some mineral, the light gray that I used in my previous DIY today, um, just to kind of soften up maybe where it's a little dark with the brown. And I just love this look. It just makes it look so cute and farmhouse. Here I'm showing you now some ideas for what you could put inside. Of course, fill up a lot of that space with some plastic grocery bags. Then I had this piece of burlap that I put on top of that just to hide them. You could use some of the uh, scarves from Dollar Tree, whatever um, you have on hand or can find at your local stores. Again, I'm reaching in my fall floral bin and just pulling stuff out. I liked this garland better. Just styling it with what I have, breaking off a piece to fit in the box. And then I'm going to add in some of my Dollar Tree pumpkins, the bigger ones, um, and some of the small ones as well. This was another project that I kind of evolved as I was going. I remembered I had these thankful family and grateful signs that I was able to find at Dollar Tree this year. And I thought I would really like one of those just to kind of fill in that blank side. So I decided to go with thankful and just keeping it the neutral color that it is. I just added some wood glue to the back of it and I'm just going to center it on this front side of my box. And here's another look using some flowers with some pumpkins. Thanks so much again for joining me today. Please comment and let me know which of these four projects you enjoyed. Are you still wanting some more fall decor DIYs? I'm also thinking of doing a fall decorate with me, but I will see you all next time. Thanks so much. Bye.